Hello everyone, on today's video I thought we'd uh, take a look at another cool game that I picked up over the uh, spring, or I should say the winter sale here, and that is uh, Re-Entry. Uh, Re-Entry is basically a really, really neat program that allows you to simulate a lot of the of early kind of space missions that took place, especially in the United States. Um, this one is a fully featured simulator. I mean, if it exists, um, there's a button for it. Uh, the manuals for this game are just as intimidating as that of like an Airbus. But at the same time, as uh, some of these early vessels are actually really, really, really cool, and they actually work pretty darn well. So um, we have about four and a half minutes before takeoff, so uh, we better go ahead and start getting this thing crunching here. So uh, for those of you not familiar with these particular spacecraft, uh, they're basically automatic until they don't need to be. I made a checklist, uh, we're going to go double check my um, full internal power. I'm just going to click on the run button to confirm that everything is set the way it needs to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call up the blockhouse and say, hey guys, we're ready to go on to internal power. Uh, once you do that, you'll notice my, of course, power load shoots through the roof here, and now I'm using these old school batteries. We're going to go ahead and set the isolation, and that checklist is complete. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, do our final checks. Uh, this is really important that you do all these. First things first, I love this switch. You basically say, um, okay, I'm ready for takeoff. <laughs> then we're going to go ahead and call them up and make sure the radio is working properly. Again, our radio is not the world's most sophisticated thing. It's uh, this one down here. We basically call them up. Everything looks good there. We're going to re verify that this button is uh, reset. Again, everything is done based on a clock in the Mercury, which is absolutely wild. I'm going to press proceed. I'm going to set the DC selector to one so we can monitor our power here. We're going to go ahead and arm our squibs. If you don't have these, uh, guess what's not coming off the back of the rocket? Yeah, the rest of the rocket. And other than that, we are now ready to go. Now, one of the things I really love about this particular simulator, and I'm not going to show this off today, is the fact that the Mercury and Gemini missions are completely simulated in VR. Now, when you look at this little rocket, especially on the pancake mode, and you're kind of just taking a look at the different switches here, you're like, well, it doesn't seem too small. Um, I hate to say it, but um, like if you look where this guy's feet are, this is the floor of the capsule right here. You know, if you look at this thing, this is basically a medium range ballistic missile that I'm sitting on the top of right here. And it's not very tall, which again, surprises some folks. So when you realize just how tiny this thing is, of course, you also have a uh, Gemini, which is a lot of fun. And if you know, there's some interest, I can actually do some pretty slick videos with Gemini because you can do a lot of things on Gemini. It's actually got a working computer on board. This one does not. Everything's based off a clock. And if you're not on time, you're going to get bounced around. All right, let's fast forward time. Now I love this. And we have 15 seconds to take off. All right. Everybody, hold on to something here. Let's go ahead and check on my ascent checklist. All right. Uh, my abort switch, by the way, is over by my left hand in case I need to escape. That's what the launch tower in the top is for. Monitor isolated battery voltage looks good. Oh, we're getting the rumbles. Oh, here we go. Got to clear the tower here. And we are on our way. Got to go. Now, remember, the Redstone rocket was basically uh, not any more complicated than one of the early V2 rockets. And there's not a lot going on inside this one. I'm going to stick my head back. Oh, the fact that my navigation display is, um, yeah, that. <laughs> then I've got this little mechanical clock. If I reset the clock at any time, it would forget where I am in the mission, which could be pretty bumpy. And the other thing is, remember, this is a medium-range ballistic missile with a person on top, which means uh, acceleration. As a matter of fact, if you take a look here on the left corner here, you can see I'm already up to 2.5 Gs. Actually, yeah, it's about 2 Gs. I'm getting shook around pretty bad here. All right, we're going to confirm that our descent rate is at zero. Makes sense. Our altitude's coming up. Uh, keep in mind, this altitude's in hundreds of thousands of feet. I should say thousands of feet. So you can see when we cross the 100 line, we're uh, 100,000. Hey, we can pass by airliners up here. Round. Oh, boy, look at the launch tower. It's not sticking on there very softly. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, man, could you imagine what this is like? I like how I've got this little, like, uh, graduated screen on here if you're trying to do uh, lining up things. And we're just going to start passing out of the atmosphere. Uh, we're sitting here at, uh, this is at 78,000 feet here, and it goes black. Now, the first time this happened, if you've ever read some of the transcripts for these early Mercury mini uh, missions, you'd probably go, wow, uh, that, 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 that's pretty scary when that happens. I can actually look out the window real quick, see my nice old curvature of the Earth. Uh, way back there is uh, Florida, but of course for us, I'm just going to jump right back in my seat. I love the instrumentation on Mercury. Like, there's absolutely nothing to it. And that's a compliment. That's not necessarily a complaint. Trust me. We're going to continue up here. Uh, notice there's no fuel gauge on this thing. This is not the Apollo. And um, personally, I'm a fan of Gemini. It's like right in the middle. Like Mercury, it's a little too simple to operate. Uh, Apollo, it's a little too complicated to operate. It's not to say you can't. It's not to say I won't. But it's just, you know, Gemini's in the middle. It's kind of fun. 
And that is our main engine cutoff. And you can see we're now on a ballistic trajectory. So the first things first, and I love this about this particular spacecraft, is you're basically going to have a sequencer here. And each one of these is the next thing you need to do in order to safely operate this particular spacecraft. So we've just had a booster engine cut off here. We're going to make sure the separation cap is green. Notice this little orange light just popped on. And there goes the tower. If it did not, I have this little ring right here. I could go ahead and give that a tub to, to go ahead and separate it myself. So that's looking pretty good here. We're going to go ahead and uh, check our thing here. A separation of capsule. This is actually staging, and staging is complete. Notice now my periscope has opened itself up, so I can now see exactly what's going on out the window. Also notice that my spacecraft automatically flips itself around. You can see that I've got my the bottom, the little boosters there. Again, we're just in free fall right now. And we're going to go ahead and get ready for our deploying here. I'm actually going to skip that step. Skip that step. I don't need that. Retro manual is going to be set false, and we are good to go. Again, the purpose of all that is to make sure you don't accidentally. All right, now we basically need to get ready for intro. Huh, as crazy as this sounds. Uh, oh, nah, there's Florida. This is where we took off from, and there's a little uh, booster there to help us out here. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, first things first, we're going to make sure that this is in the off position. We don't want that accidentally jettisoning. We're going to go ahead and kill the circuit breaker for this one right here, and our checklist for that is complete. Uh, we're going to get ready for our retro now. And again, uh, when we do retro entry, it's completely automatic. But um, we have about, I'm taking a look at my emission clock here. Re retrograde is in 1 minute and 10 seconds. So I don't exactly have a lot of time to goof around, but we'll do it anyway. So rate command, manual. Let's try it out. Whoa. Hee -hee. You can see the little RCS system. Oh boy, getting a little bit of a fun here. I'm going to go ahead and nudge. Oh man. Oh boy. Now, the real system uh, had uh, some mechanical trouble, to say the least. I'm actually going to slap that into uh, lock mode. Now, watch this. If I hold and I let go, it'll actually slow itself down a little bit, which is kind of nice. I've got 41 seconds to retro. I better get ready here. Uh, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. All right. I'll go ahead and flap it back to automatic mode. The spacecraft will automatically line itself back up with the correct orientation that it needs to be on. Unfortunately, we don't get to play with this too much, which is a shame because it's got some kind of neat little tricks to it. We can pretend we're little spies. All right, we have 22 seconds into a retro. Okay, so we're going to get a retro warn light in just a minute. That's going to be this little light, and it's going to go boop, boop, boop at us, just to give us a heads up that's about to fire. Again, the retro rockets on this thing are not exactly what I consider sophisticated. That's this little tiny retro pack sitting on the back here. Go ahead and jump back inside real fast. I'm going to go ahead and check my pre-retro. Oh, there it goes. Notice we're already at retro attitude. We're getting a retro sequence warning. And what's going to happen is it's going to automatically fire the retro rockets. There it goes. That's how long. There's the warning. Put that off. Patience. 20 second warning. 20 second warning. The light comes on to give us a... Oh, oh there it is. <laughs> They're so cute. I think our version in Simple Rockets is cooler, personally. Oh, that's uncomfortable. Oh, notice we're actually passing our thing that boosted us up here. Gotta go. <laughs> All right, our last rocket fires. And now we need to uh, jettison the retro. Well, we've already pre-armed that, so I'm not worried about it too much. We need to get ready for re-entry. This is the important part. All right, retro jettison should be set to the true position. Whoop. Checked. We need to make sure we're in the correct orientation. So the nose should start coming up. And it's actually coming up much too slow for me. I don't like that. I'm going to do it myself because I don't like it. Oh. Up, 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 up. There we go. Now I'll slap it back to automatic. Make sure we are set to re-entry mode. Everything's checked. And now we are ready for re-entry. Uh, so the most important thing there with re-entry is you got to make sure that you actually set this thing to go. Our little our retro pack has got to come off before we start hitting the atmosphere. There it goes. <laughs> now, the real one is actually really, really cool. It has the ability to actually pull itself out of the way. Like, there's a little rocket that will fire and actually push this slightly to the side so that we don't go smacking into it when we start re-entering in just a few moments. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and start slowing down. Uh, the next warning you're going to get is when you hit the atmosphere. Uh, you know we're going to hit the atmosphere in a moment because what will happen is this teeny tiny little light will pop on to tell us that we're feeling half of, a, actually 0.05 gravity of deceleration. And that, uh, you can see our current acceleration is zero because we're in complete free fall right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at a little retro pack. You can see it kind of chilling back there. Oh, see it? See it? See it moving? Aha, gotta go. 
All right, our spacecraft is now going to start rolling itself kind of right to left here in this direction. The purpose of this roll is so that when we do hit the atmosphere, that we get even heating across the entire uh, reentry shield here, which uh, fingers crossed that it uh, behaves. Oh, there's the 0.5G warning. We can go ahead and flip this switch. We're good to go. Whoa, that's a little disorienting. This is really fun to do when you actually do some stuff here. I'm just gonna confirm everything else is good. And there we go. Oh boy, look at the acceleration. <laughs> that's 10 Gs. Oh God, 11 Gs. Oh, this is uncomfortable. And you can see I'm tumbling a little bit. Oh, oh boy, we're tumbling. And here comes the fireball part. Ooh, that's some serious vibration there. Good thing we put the scope back up, otherwise uh, we would have taken that piece of metal right off the front of this thing. And we are through the worst part of it. Yes. Oh, we live another day. Okay. Oh, look at that atmosphere. I kind of missed you. You can see our cabin pressures are super low, and I'm probably, I've cooked myself pretty good here. Yeah, it's like 140 degrees in the cabin right now. Not that warm. Uh, my suit on the flip side is incredibly warm, too. So I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, click a couple switches here to go ahead and cool me off because uh, my character's getting a little warm here. Uh, Gemini has a complicated cooling system. Now, Apollo has an absurdly complicated cooling system. All right, looking pretty good. Uh, we're re-entering. Everything looks solid. I'm not thrilled with our re-entry orientation here. It looks like uh, we're kind of skidding, but the big thing here is that we haven't clicked in the drogue parachute yet. So until that actually pops out, I'm not too worried about it. Now, I'm on Chalita, green, red indicators, roll rate. So uh, we had a system failure here. The whole thing did not fire properly. The loud bang noise you just heard was the uh, drogue chute popping up. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to get ready for landing. I'm going to go ahead and confirm everything is good. We're going to flip our DF to that side just to let everybody know where we are when we do hit the ground. Uh, you can see my acceleration is now to a nice, convenient 1G. Oh, my back hurts after that. But fortunately, that reentry is a lot quicker than people give it credit to. We can actually force activate that so we don't have to worry about it. And you can see my drogue chute still fired properly. All right, we're getting main and the main chute activated. Landing bag has got a 20 second warning. So the landing bag, this is pretty fun by the way in VR because um, you get basically, you go like this going, oh, the blood on my head. Okay, so the landing bag is this gigantic little inflatable bag. I can't see it well, oh, there it is, it actually fired. And what that will do is that uh, when we do hit the water, we hit it a little bit softer rather than kaboom, really, really hard like we could. Stuff like that happens. The reason the emergency oxygen went off, by the way, is on account of the fact that if you observe our cabin pressure, we have this thing called a snorkel, which actually pops up and gives us some nice fresh air. Uh, if we needed to in an emergency, this is really cool. We can actually decompress the entire spacecraft instantly in the event that we had a fire or something like that. But of course, doing that is going to suck down quite a bit of our air. So we got to kind of keep that in mind. Now, the fun thing is when you do the Mercury-Jupiter missions later on, you have to actually orbit. You know, when you orbit, there's no real good indication other than this little ball right here, which tells you roughly where you are. All right, we just sort of enjoy a little drop here. This is always the fun part of any of these missions, especially when you're doing the Apollo missions. When you finally get out of that rocket, you're like, oh, man, I'm done with space travel. I can see about 7,000 feet to go. Look out the windows real quick. Uh, normally there'd be a helicopter kind of finding us. And the cool thing is when this thing actually lands, it has a little direction finder on it that makes all sorts of electronic noise. It even has this little, uh, basically die that starts to flood in the water so you're easier to find. And it didn't always land just off the coast. And in this particular case, you can see basically the Bahamas. It would also land like off the coast of Australia, depending on what mission you were dealing with. But one of the most interesting things I think so far is the fact that if you've actually followed along how long everything's taken, that's literally how long it was since that rocket actually fired and started lifting us off the ground here. You know, that's kind of interesting. If you actually look at the mechanical plan there, I love how it's not quite smooth, just like it would be if it were mechanical. I right, think about 4,000 feet to go. Again, this is pretty relaxing. I imagine the whole back end of this thing is incredibly hot. It's a good time to start doing our last couple minute checks here. Our suit fans are feeling pretty good. Cabin pressure's coming up. Temperature inside the cabin is thankfully down to 50 degrees. What? I apparently can't quite put it on number three there. So it'll warm us up in a minute. You can actually watch the steam vents adjusting themselves so that they can uh, warm us back up now, now that I've properly frozen myself. Good time to go check on my batteries. Yeah, I see my batteries are doing fine. The main bus, uh, we're about 40 amps right now. If you started shutting things off, you could actually save a lot of battery. Standby bus, of course, is uh, not enabled at this time, and obviously my isolation bus, I haven't actually enabled it, so I wouldn't worry about it too, too much. That's here, right over here. 
Flip it back to main. We're about 40 amps, which is fine. All right, now we're about a thousand feet off the water, and you're gonna hear like whoosh. Oh my god, this is a little disorienting. I don't know about you, but usually when I look backwards, I don't expect everything to be upside down. Whoosh, we did it. Okay, hopefully this video was kind of interesting. Again, I just wanted to kind of show you some other things that I'm kind of interested to in implementing. Um, I definitely love to do videos with this, like, you know, like Gemini or like Apollo, which is a little absurd. I mean, could you imagine just trying to explain some of these electronics on here? It'd just be oh, crazy. Other than that, enjoy.